Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we continue our sermon series on the small called Articles, Part 2, with Article 2 regarding the abuse of the Papal Mass. Let us pray. Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Now, in the first article, Luther discussed the doctrine of justification and how Christ saves us. Article 2 to 4 of the Small Court Articles Part 2 do not speak of Christ's saving work, but they focus on the abuses of the papacy which, just, which detract from the work of Christ. The first article that Luther addresses is the abuse of the papal mass. In Article 24 of the Augsburg Confession, Melanchthon declares that in our churches, the mass is retained and celebrated with reverence. When Melanchthon spoke of the Mass here, he was speaking of the Sacrament of Holy Communion, which was also known as the Mass since the days of Pope Gregory the Great. When Luther speaks of the Mass here in the Small Cold Articles, however, Luther has in mind not the Sacrament of Holy Communion, but the Papist abuse known as the Sacrifice of the Mass. Luther explicitly condemns the idea that the sacrifice or work of the Mass delivers people from their sins both in this life and beyond in purgatory. Because of the papal abuses regarding the Mass and the baggage attached to that term, Lutherans have often dropped the use of this word altogether. In the Catechism and the Small Cold Articles, Luther refers to the sacrament as the sacrament of the altar, the term first coined by St. Augustine of Hippo. In the Augsburg Confession, Melanchthon refers to it as the Lord's Supper, and in the Formula of Concord, Chemnitz refers to it as the Holy Supper. When Luther condemns the Mass in Article 2, Luther is focusing specifically on the papist idea of the sacrifice of the Mass, which earns the forgiveness of sins. The papists taught that during the consecration of the elements, the priests offered up an unbloodied sacrifice of Christ. This meant that during every celebration of the Lord's Supper, the priests would spiritually re-sacrifice Christ on the altar in order to distribute the body and blood to the communicants. This spiritual sacrifice was then linked to the physical sacrifice of Christ on the cross. This understanding of Holy Communion is already problematic in its view of the priest re-sacrificing Christ. But on top of this, the papists considered it a good work which obtained the forgiveness of sins. The priest sacrifices Christ and merits forgiveness and righteousness which is then dispensed to the communicants. This is not the work of Christ alone, but the sacrifice of the priest. Therefore, it is not the death of Christ on the cross that actually forgives you your sins. It is the spiritual, unbloody sacrifice of the priest that earns the forgiveness of sins. The death of Christ on the cross is merely the background force that allows this unbloody sacrifice to be possible. Because if Jesus had not died on the cross, then we would have to continue doing the Old Testament sacrifices. Thus the papists do not believe that it is the sacrifice of Christ alone that saves us. Instead, they think that it is our good works that save us. The sacrifice of Christ only makes it possible for those good works to be credited to us as righteousness. The papists believe that the Jews earned their salvation through the act of their sacrifices. Thus, likewise, we Christians earn salvation through this act of Holy Communion. Whereas we Lutherans would condemn such a view because it contradicts and conflicts with Article 1 that we are justified by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone. In St. Saint, Saint Peter teaches us in Acts 4.12 that we are saved by no other name than Christ. Therefore... If we earn our salvation through the doing of the sacrifice or through the doing of Holy Communion, then we are not indeed saved by Christ alone. Instead, we are saved by our own works. And we read in Romans 3.28 that we are justified by faith apart from works. And again in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Paul says that we are justified by grace through faith, not as a result of works, lest anyone should boast. The sacrifices of the Old Testament and the sacraments of the New Testament save us. 
not because they are our work, but because they are a means of grace which distributes to us the saving grace of God. On the cross, Jesus alone paid the debts for our sin. Jesus alone earned our salvation. That salvation he earned on the cross, and it is won by no one else. That salvation is now distributed to the believer through the means of grace, which are indeed linked to the sacrifice of Christ. The Old Testament sacrifices linked forward to the coming death of Christ, and the sacraments link, link backwards to the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. It is true that, the whole, that Holy Communion is linked to the death of Christ on the cross, but not in the sense that it allows us to spiritually re-sacrifice Christ in the Supper. The Lord's Supper is linked to the sacrificing of Christ in the sense that in this bread and in this cup we receive the very body and blood of Christ broken, given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And so the Lutherans rejected the practice of the sacrifice of the Mass because it contradicts the Holy Scriptures, which teach us that we are saved by Christ alone and not by our own good works. In Article 2, Luther gives five reasons for why the Mass, and by that I mean not the sacrament, but the sacrifice of the Mass, why it should be given up. First, is that this is a man-made practice and has no origins in Scripture. Nowhere does Scripture teach that the priest is able to perform an unbloody re-sacrifice of Christ on the altar. Second, is that since this is a man-made doctrine, we can give it up without sinning. Third, that if we do drop this ridiculous sacrifice of the Mass, we can now have our focus on a better Lord's Supper. If we ditch the idea that we earn our salvation in Holy Communion, we can focus our attention on the good news that in this Holy Communion, we receive the free gift of Christ's sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. In the Augsburg Confession, Melanchthon states that we Lutherans have not abolished the Mass. Instead, we retain it and celebrate it with more reverence and frequency than the Papists, because we have a true and proper understanding of the Mass as the means of grace. Fourth, is that many numerous abuses have been built upon this abuse of the Mass. Luther ends Article 2 with a long list of abuses that have arisen from the Mass, such as purgatory, the appearance of ghosts, pilgrimages, monastic orders, worship of relics and indulgences. Luther briefly discusses these issues and their connection to the Mass. Since each of these abuses addresses an important issue, I think that it is best for us to discuss them in their own sermon in the coming weeks. But in this fourth reason to do away with the sacrifice of the Mass, Luther focuses in on the issue of private Masses, which were performed for the sake of money. It was a communion, it was common practice for a layman to pay the priest to perform a private Mass. And notice here though, when I speak of a private Mass, I do not mean a situation in which the priest and the communicant have private communion together. No, the private Mass is, was a situation in which the priest alone would commune, normally on behalf of another to earn for them righteousness particularly for those in purgatory. Thus, I could go and I could buy a private mass for my grandfather. The priest would commune himself, earning forgiveness and righteousness in the process, which would then be transferred to my grandfather in purgatory. This is one of the many abuses that has arisen from the abuse of the mass. And so Luther ends with the fifth and final reason to give up the Mass and the sacrifice of the Mass. And this is the most and worst abuse that came from the Mass. 
It is the idea that the Mass was a human work that acquired forgiveness of sins and merited grace. Luther says, the Mass must be condemned because it directly contradicts the chief article that we are justified by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone. Luther then adds, it is not the sacrifice of the priest that saves us, but it is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And so Luther then addresses the issue of private masses and the question as to whether it would be permissible to one to continue the practice if they were doing so for their own personal devotion. Luther rejects the notion, for we are commanded to celebrate the sacrament in accordance with the institution of Christ. Therefore, one is not to commune himself outside of the church community. Luther states that to commune oneself, here he does not mean a pastor communing himself within the congregation setting, but he refers to those pastors or priests who would commune themselves apart from the congregation. Luther says that this is a human notion, thus it is not found in scripture. Luther says that it is uncertain, thus it is doubtful whether it would be a valid sacrament. Luther adds that it is unnecessary, thus it is not needed to do in the first place. And lastly, Luther says it is forbidden, for the command of Christ is to gather together for Holy Communion, not to commune ourselves apart from the church community. Luther then ends his comments on the Mass by declaring that if an ecumenical council were to be held, that this must be the chief issue of discussion. Luther quotes the papist theologian Lorenzo Campeggio, who at the Diet of Augsburg declared that he would rather be torn limb to limb than to give up the Mass. And here, Campeggio was not referring to the sacrament Holy Communion, which obviously we would be willing to die for. Instead, he is speaking of the sacrifice of the Mass. He would rather die and being torn to pieces than to give up the sacrifice of the Mass. And Luther responds that he too would rather be burnt to ashes than to allow a servant of the Mass and his work of performing the Mass to be considered equal to or greater than the work of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who saved us on the cross by his death. Therefore, Luther declares that we and the Papists are and will remain eternally divided and opposed to one another. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.